people always ask me, Mark, what product should I take? And really, it's a, it's a matter of what strain I should take. It, it's really a matter of what terpene you should be using. And once you understand your terpene profile, then you can match that to the right strain that can help you get the relief that you're really looking for. And again, the topic that we are addressing today is finding relief. Um, now, you've seen where people have come in for consultations, and really, you guide them to the right terpene profile, right? Absolutely. That's what we're all about at Sotera. Um, Usually about, I would say, 70% of the time, uh, consumers or patients come in and they're really looking at the THC percentage uh, before we get to talk to them and kind of show them why that's not the most important factor of the product that they're purchasing. Whether it's a right of administration of oral, inhalation, topical, or otherwise, um, sometimes that does make an impact to what you're trying to obtain, but otherwise, this chart is a, a prime example of the different terpene profiles, which is also important to point out, Mark, that we're mentioning profiles, not just a singular pro, uh, terpene or otherwise, because it's actually the entourage, the synergistic, or the combination of these terpenes, along with the cannabinoids such as THC and CBD, that really makes the recipe work. Yeah, that's a good point. We talked about the entourage effect when we began this video. Um, it really talks about putting those all together. Um, and, and, and by the way, when you buy a, a cannabis product, you don't get a terpene. You know, you get a combination of terpenes, right? Absolutely. It is truly a recipe. I like to call it the, to call it the secret sauce. Um, mm -hmm. and, and to that point, um, for instance, if you look at limonene on the left there, it says it releases, relieves stress and anxiety. Pining right next to it says the same thing. However, <laughs> I found that the combination of the two, particularly an abundant amount of pining with limonene, and when I say abundant, that could be within a point of a percent, um, can actually induce anxiety or that paranoia or that PTS syndrome that one may be dealing with. So it's very important to take a look at the combination and have that consultation or discussion with the representative at any dispensary, but particularly at Sotero, we have different approaches at it to whatever's most beneficial for the consumer and, and get an understanding of what you're taking, why you're taking it and what you're looking to get out of it. Great. Listen, we're going to jump into some pre-webinar uh, questions that were asked. And I should point out to everyone, please feel free to ask questions. Down at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little Q&A tab. It looks like two little bubbles that are down there. Uh, we're here to answer your questions. And I know it's hard to get your questions answered. So please feel free to to let us know what your question is. And again, there's no such thing as a bad or a dumb question. So let us know we're here to really help. Let's start with the first one, Manny. It says, can you explain the ways of ingesting besides smoking? I think we covered those routes of administration, right? Yes, uh, that was actually covered in the presentation. Um, I'd love to recap on it here. As you can see on the slide, um, you have sublingual, you have capsules which fall on oral, topicals, which is just as it suggests, inhalation, just as it suggests, the concentrates typically would go under an inhalation route. The transdermal patches will go on a topical, edibles, as this suggests, and sprays may go under oral as well. Now, I didn't in, uh, accidentally skip flour. The reason I skipped over that one is because flour falls under its own route of administration in the state of Florida. That falls under a smokable route, which is separate from inhalation. So it's very important to point out, and depending on what you're trying to achieve, typically would suggest what route of administration you're looking for, or if it's suggested by your physician. Nine times out of 10, Mark, in a dispensary, we will recommend an inhalant or flower simply because it's the fastest in. Onset is almost immediate, if not immediate, but it's also the fastest out. Whereas when you take it sublingually or orally, it's slow to for the onset, up to maybe two or three hours, depending on your, your, your diet, your metabolism and such. Um, but it's also slow to leave the body. It can last upwards to eight hours. So that's sure. why when you're first starting out, we usually recommend an inhalant to see what approach or what terpene profile would be a better approach for you in any other route. Sure. And this is where your vape pens, for example, come into play, because what happens is you get the terpene profile in that vape pen, as well as the capability to have a rapid onset, meaning almost immediately. A hundred percent. And I, I would always point to our wellness line, our ratio based products, because mm -hmm. they are consistent. They're formulated. Um, although they're all natural, they're still going to be formulated so for that consistency. So you can find your terpene profile and then branch out from that with the recipe in hand to find products that are similar, if not comparable, if not even better. Yeah. And a lot of people talk about what they call whole plant products, which are products that have the whole plant that's in there. And I know that rosins and resins, which are concentrates, have that characteristic. 
A hundred percent. We have an FSO, full spectrum oil, also known as Rick Simpson oil. That mm -hmm. is a concentrate. However, that would come under your oral or topical routes, depending on the dispensary and approvals that they gotten for their products. Um, but typically, most definitely oral and it's not to be inhaled. So again, having those consultations, those one-on-one -on -one with your guides or your dispensary uh, employees are is very crucial and beneficial to your success in using medical marijuana. And I think the main thing to point out here is that there's more than one way to take cannabis. I know that when you go to a, a, a the normal uh, Western medicine doctor, they'll say, you know, take two pills and call me in the morning. Um, in this particular case, you have different options. You do have capsules, but you also have edibles. You have uh, sublingual drops. You have, you know, the, 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 the inhalation routes. Um, so you have options of using something that you will consistently use to provide the relief that's out there. And by the way, you can mix and match these. I use sublingual drops when I wake up in the morning and they usually take about anywhere, from my particular case, about 20 to 25 minutes to work. But I also take and immediately take a hit out of a vape pen. And the reason for that is because with seven herniated discs in my neck, I wake up with a level of pain of between a seven and an eight. And by using that inhalation product, I'm able to take that pain level from a seven or an eight down to a one, literally almost immediately, and then use the sublingual drops to carry on for the four to six hours that I'm looking for. And that type of titration mark is absolutely beneficial for sleep as well. Using mm -hmm. something as an inhalant to go to sleep, but before you actually fall asleep from that product, take a sublingual or, or, or an edible. So that way, when that wears off, that other product kicks in and help keeps you asleep for the six, seven hours that we're really looking for, if not more. And sure. also to that point, if you're not really wanting to put anything in your lungs, I did mention most of the dispensaries will recommend inhalation or uh, some type of inhalation, whether it's smokable or vapes, because it's a fast onset and leaves the body fast. But if you're not comfortable with that, we also have the sublingual drops, which I would recommend as a second, because it has an onset well, usually within 30 minutes as it stays there, 15 to 20. Um, but it, it, you could titrate up very slowly. As, as Amy and yourself said, start low, go slow, start with 0.25, which is about 2.5 grams of a product, depending on its ratio. And then you could titrate up every so many hours to find your biphasic sweet spot. Right. And let, let's clear the air on flour for a second. If you take a blunt, you light it up and you go smoke it, you're, you're burning you, it, you're burning a material, it, potentially a burnt material getting into your lungs, which really isn't the best for you. Although cannabis isn't carcinogenic like tobacco is, it's still something that is burnt material. But that's why people look at inhalation concentrates and also, more importantly, they take that flour and drop it into what they call a dry herb vaporizer, which doesn't burn the flour. It vaporizes it. And those dry herb vaporizers, you get all the benefits of cannabis without the negative side of the burnt material. A hundred percent. And it's actually a lot more subtle. So you can actually titrate and work that out to your benefit. And you can use the byproduct that um, vape flour that you have in the dry herb vaporizer now that it's decarboxylated and active, although not as much THC because you vaporize most of it, you could sprinkle that on your ice cream, put it in your coffee grinds and add a little additional oomph to what you're looking for to get a long lasting effect. Some of us drop it in their smoothies. There you go. <laughs> it works very, works very well. Let's jump to the second question because this is a really good one. Is there a particular strain that may help with inflammation? Uh, something, uh, something that anti with anti-inflammation properties but well, we showed that terpene profile with all the in, in with all the uh, different anti-inflammation properties but i think also let's not overlook the fact that cbd is great for inflammation your comments M manny i would 100 percent agree mark we actually um, have a product for that which i'll mention here in a moment but i want to take this moment to point out again you can see anti-inflammatory across the board however it's going to be the combination you're looking for so I would primarily re recommend any product that's usually going to be a hybrid, high in B-caryophylline, which is right there in your middle. It's your natural pain relief, anti-inflammatory, actually reacts almost like a cannabinoid, if, like a, if not like a cannabinoid with your CB2 receptors, which are in your peripherals, which really helps alleviate that pain and inflammation. Um, now, depending if you want it for day or nighttime, I would follow it with myrcene for nighttime or limonene for daytime. So you have different options and you can all find this at your dispensary on the COAs, which are provided upon request, if not posted um, somewhere online or otherwise. Sure. So I think if you're looking for something to help with inflammation, here's some terpenes that can help you. And then again, those get translated into the various 
strains that are out there or, or cultivars is what we call them because they're usually designed for a particular purpose. Like you have a product called Dream, which is made to help you with sleep, right? Absolutely. And, and to that point, I was actually going to recommend Soothe One to One. To your point, Mark, has more CBD with also a lot of B, B caryophylline, which helps with that uh, pain and inflammation. But it also has 50% THC, which also complements with that pain relief. As we all are been talking about, that entourage or synergistic effect of that total recipe makes that much of an impact and difference. Sure. And then again, it helps quite a bit. Let's jump into the second, next question. What do you think of upcoming vote for recreational cannabis? Uh, good question. Uh, first of all, I'm glad it's on the ballot, and I'm glad we have an opportunity for the people in the state of Florida to express their thoughts on this particular subject. I do believe that it will pass because there's a lot of people that are uh, pro-cannabis. As we know, the medical marijuana bills passed with over a 70% approval rate. Now, <clears throat> the recreational bill that was proposed is not perfect. It's got a lot of flaws in it. There's a lot of people that can criticize what's going on. For example, it doesn't give people the capability of growing their own, which is one of the reasons why people like met recreational programs. However, I think the capability of taking the prohibition part of cannabis away, I think is very, very important to set a mental tone for the fact that cannabis is, is something that is just like alcohol or just like caffeine, something that people can use and it's not threatening to them, which I think today with a with the Schedule One um, uh, stigma on it, a lot of people are concerned about it. And I think this helps quite a bit. Now, the negative side of it is people believe they could just walk into their dispensaries and go buy some cannabis, and it's going to help them. But you still have to figure out what medical cannabis products you need to use. I have a video out on the difference between recreation and medical cannabis, and even when the recreational states, people still need to figure out what terpenes what products to buy and get those COAs. So I think there's a lot of work we have to do to help support the medical cannabis patient in a recreational cannabis world. I think you're going to get that support here in the state of Florida. And I think the other thing you're going to find out is that it'll attract more people to the medical marijuana program because they realize here's a product that can help me. It may be helping me a little bit, but is there something I can do to fine tune it to really address my particular situation? So it's not perfect. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of things I don't like about it but the fact that we're doing it and moving the needle to a recreational state is really, really important because once we get that done, we can then go back and correct a lot of the um, imperfections in that particular bill. Uh, Manny, I don't want to put you on the on the on on the on the uh, uh, under pressure, but I think as a somebody from a dispensary, what's your thoughts on this? Absolutely, I was I was hoping you'd give me the opportunity to comment on this one. I I personally. Uh, agree with you on that, Mark. Um, what I don't think a lot of people realize is there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the background, as you suggested, Mark. There does need to be certain regulations and otherwise, otherwise we can run into situations like we did a few years ago with people creating their own products with what they may have thought could be safe on the black market and ended up killing people. So we want to be very careful and cautious. However, taking that step Moving that needle is always progressive, and, and, and I can appreciate that. And that's what I'm looking for as well. So, yes, I agree, Mark. Um, I just would like people for, to understand that there is so much work that needs to go on behind the scenes to make this safe and comfortable for everybody across the board. And, and we will do that work, and we'll make it available to people. I think it's important to point out what recreational cannabis is going to do is put pressure on the street people. Street yes. cannabis doesn't have any COAs. You don't know what you're getting. Most of it is is safe, but there's a lot of it that isn't. And so by going to a recreational program, it makes it safer for the general population, which is where a lot of politicians really look at it from that particular point of view. But I do believe that we need to be able to have education to go along with it so people understand how to use it, what to use it for, and that type of thing. We're very familiar with alcohol because we have years of, rec of, of education on it. The same thing's got to happen with medical, with recreational cannabis. Your final thoughts on that, Manny? I, I agree. Well said. Yeah. Th this other question is exactly the same that ties to it. It says, if Florida approves recreational marijuana, how would that impact the cost and the quality of medical can marijuana? First of all, I'm going to give you my opinion, and I'll let you chime in, to, uh, Manny. I think the quality is going to go up, and I think the cost is going to go down because you're going to have more product being sold and you're going to have more players in the product line, more competition, cause always, always in any market, whether it's cannabis, cars, um, uh, basketballs, golf, it doesn't make any difference. The more players, 
the lower the cost and of course the better the quality. Now I do believe that um, this this will happen and I think it's going to be a matter of education because when you say quality, this is where you get into monitoring the COAs and really making sure that you are putting out a product that's safe for the general public. Your thoughts, Manny? I agree with that, Mark. I don't. I, I really don't think. Um, in fact, I would say, as, or go as far as to say that I know that quality would not drop. Um, those dispensaries, such as Sotera, that are always striving for excellence and putting the most premium and highest quality product out there, will continue to do so. Um, I do would, or I guess I would suggest that um, as it is now, there's premium quality flour out there at a higher price point compared to. Uh, not, I would say lower quality, but not grown under certain circumstances as a premium at a lower price point. So I think that might play a role here when it goes recreational. I'm not sure how that how it's going to go. It also depends, I would suggest, a lot on the state regulations that come following that, depending right. on how dispensaries are going to maneuver. But we're all preparing for it, and we're still going to continue to bring the best quality products at a most affordable price that we can to our customers. Yeah, I don't think the issue of quality is going to be one that um, the at least the dispensaries, the more they sell, the more they're going to have the money to be able to put into a quality product, and they're going to be able to do that, and they will do it. All the dispensaries I know, including Cetera, are, are really strive for quality. I think <clears throat> the main issue that I'm concerned with is we have a group of politicians in Tallahassee that don't listen to the will, the will and the wishes of the general public. And they're already trying to undermine this bill. They're already trying to cap the amount of THC and the amount you can buy and those types of things. That is what causes the quality problems, not the quality manufacturing coming from the dispensaries. Your thoughts, Manny? Yes, absolutely. And, and even to that point, Mark, the, the way the grows operate without giving out any secrets is they really look at the whole crop. They're not just looking at something and if they see uh, an issue, they don't simply just isolate that and that's the end of the story. They investigate, they go thoroughly through and through because there is quality control, there is liability and that right. would always remain particularly in the medical field. Yeah, I think I think my my message to mainly to politicians is do the job that the people want and stay out of the medical side because that's not something that they know much about. Um, they are not, politicians aren't known to lean heavily on science. And this is something that we really want to do. They really provide the relief that people are looking for with medical cannabis. Now, next question is, I never got my medical marijuana card. I've asked different uh, dispensaries, how do I get one? Uh, I've tried several options. Well, let's make this really clear. The dispensaries don't give out the medical marijuana cards. You get them through what they call um, M M uh, through MMTCs. Now, the best one I recommend here in the state of Florida, Florida is MMTC of Florida. It's, it's MMTC.com. And if you go to MMTC.com slash survey, what you're able to do is you're able to go online. You can fill out a survey to find out if you do qualify for medical cannabis. Um, and so that would make it really interesting to be able to um, uh, identify if you in fact can, can get a card because there are qualifying conditions and most people do qualify. I would say like 95%, if not 98% of people qualify, but MMTC that I mean, MMTC of Florida, which is MMTCFL.com is I think a great place to start. I recommend them. There's 25 floor uh, dispensaries, or excuse me, clinics within Florida. And more importantly, once you get your card from them, they have a program where they actually follow up every month. You get one to two emails that talks about medical cannabis, how to use it, how to get support, solicit from you, uh, how you're doing. You there, and they also have a call center that supports you. So you have a support program as opposed to a lot of the uh, of doctors. When you go get your card, you're kind of left just trying to figure out what to do. Um, they actually walk you through your whole what I call medical cannabis journey and really help you out quite a bit. Um, any other thoughts you have on that, uh, Manny? Well, you pretty much covered it. I would just add that most dispensaries typically are, don't allow for their their employees or bud tenders or med tenders, whatever they may be described as, to put out that information because we don't want to show favoritism to any just one clinic. Um, so we would just usually direct you to look it up on Google for your area. Um, but yeah, I would agree that, Mark, that uh, MMTC is phenomenal. I've worked with them for quite a few years, know a few of their physicians, and I give them two thumbs up 100%. Yeah, I think I think this again. It's not the job of the dispensary. In fact, if anything, it puts you in a difficult position. But the MS, MMTCs, which is MMTC of Florida, uh, can really help with that quite a bit. So um, please feel free to avail yourself. And I'd like to get try to understand your. Uh, if you have any comments, let us know. 
Next question is, what is the latest research from Boston Medical School on the effectiveness of medical marijuana for mood regulation with Alzheimer's patients? Uh, this is an interesting question because I took the took the liberty of going out and trying to find a Boston Medical School um, article, the publication. I've I've seen a number of Alzheimer's studies. I've actually gone through about seven of them that are being done, that have been done in Israel, been done in Germany, uh, in UK, and more importantly, Canada. Um, <clears throat> this The only one I really found was one from Harvard Business Review, which is a study where they put together, I guess they got a gift from <clears throat> an alumni that's really started a study on CBD to help with, um, uh, with Alzheimer's. Now, I can tell you this study is going on. Uh, it won't finish until 2026, this particular study. But studies that have been concluded and have been done, um, like from Israel, like I mentioned from Canada uh, and, and from Spain, have, have all concluded that CBD with THC, a high, a high ratio CBD to THC, is very effective at helping with Alzheimer's because of the neuroprotectant uh, coding capabilities of CBD. And also the triggering with THC really helps to relieve things like inflammation, pain, and also helps the patients. Now, what it will not do is get rid of Alzheimer's. It will not reverse Alzheimer's, but it will significantly slow it down and it'll give a lot of relief to the patients. And more importantly, to the people supporting the patients, help them be able to manage those particular patients that's there. Uh, you, have you seen anything on your side, Manny, uh, from, from an Alzheimer's standpoint? Not on the studies per se. However, as far as experience with some uh, customers or patients that have come in through the store, as I was a store manager, I have, and two products uh, have shown promise in the ones that I recommended them to. And one of them is a four to one serene, which is a high CBD mm -hmm. to THC ratio. Great for focus, clarity, not so much energy, but that focus and clarity can usually help one get mobile. Um, and then if the tolerance is, um, nurtured well enough, I would say, or if you get too tolerant to the four to one serene, the next step to that would be the one to one revive. But that one is very energetic. And that one should be tested at home first, because it can induce a little anxiety, depending on one's nature. Right. And there, there are a lot of studies right now that have been started up on Alzheimer's. Like I said, the ones that are out there that have been published, and I, I lean more towards the ones from Canada, especially in, in Israel, um, have really shown a lot of promise for Alzheimer's patients. Uh, it's a difficult it's a difficult condition, difficult for both the patients and, and the caregivers, um, but there is some relief that can be brought into this and if nothing else to slow it down and maybe even, um, um, I wouldn't say stop it, but get to a point where it makes it easier to work with and to manage the patient. Um, let's take a look at the next question that we have here. Um, okay, what product should I cycle with tinctures for strong pain relief, I need to sleep at night and function in the daytime. Manny, that is right up your alley. Absolutely. So if you are really into tinctures, particularly that's amazing for sleep, uh, I would just probably add the same product of the tincture in a vape to help you go to sleep, take the tincture before falling asleep, and that way you get the rest. In the morning, I would try using a four to one serene. Um, or five to one serene in a tincture for focus and clarity, it will not get you euphoric because I'm always particular about mitigating uh, your ailments during the day as well. A lot of people do not use products during the day because they work or they're with children, whatever it may be. However, these products with higher CBD to THC ratios are very little to no euphoric effects whatsoever. And it can help mitigate a lot of your symptoms so you don't need as much product at night or you just use it ever so often. So that right. five to one serene during the day, um, that one will not come in a vape, but it will come in Theragels and or tincture. And then the whatever you're using for sleep, if it's for pain, I would suggest the relief one to nine as a vape and or tincture to help you both go to sleep and stay asleep. If it's just going to sleep, the one to nine dream may be a better fit. Yeah, that dream product for sleeping is uh, is great. I've tried that and it works really, really well. I've had other patients use it and they, they recommend it quite a bit. And I think you're right. Getting the the pain relief is one that's where you use uh, you know your product you're recommending for pain relief really makes a big difference. So there are options that you have, and I hope those 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 particular options are there. You have a wellness product line, and I think that's important that a lot of folks understand that you can go to uh, to Satera, ask for their wellness product line, and they'll lay out the products, for example, for pain relief and for sleep that you should be looking for. Is that correct? Absolutely, a hundred percent. 
Um, and just keep in mind that the more you use the serene or a high CBD product during the day, which will help with inflammation, after about a week to two weeks, depending, could take a little bit longer, you should start seeing that you won't use as much of those high THC products at night because you're mitigating during the day with high CBD. And this is a perfect uh, slide for our wellness line. That five to one serene, as I mentioned on the left, stepping up to the one to four, one to one soothe. That one to nine relief I was just mentioning comes in a pure reserve oil. So you can actually dose it directly orally, dab it, add it to flour, or you could freeze them little drops and use them as lozenges. Comes in a vape as well. And then that revive kind of crossed there for me. Um, is one of the better ones to step up from Serene before going to Zen. Zen is going to be a higher THC product. And sure. then, of course, that dream at the end. But this is also a great segue, Mark. If you look, relief is one to nine, dreams one to nine. So what's the difference, you would ask, is that terpene profile. Same amount of CBD, same amount of THC, but because the terpene profiles are slightly askew or different, one is better for just sleep, that racing mind. The other one, like relief, is going to be better for pain and sleep. Yeah, and I should point out um, that that's a perfect example where terpenes make the difference in the product. And also, uh, I, this slide is a little bit misleading because Dream does come as a tincture. It does. It's just not listed there. It comes, most of our wellness line will come in tinctures, sterigels, um, our syringes, vapes, unless yeah. it's a high CBD. Usually anything higher than a one-to-one -one ratio in CBD will not come in a vape simply right. because if the CBD is sourced from a, a, a good, pure source, it will recrystallize, rendering that vape uh, unuseful. Right. Well, I hope that answered that question. Let's jump on to the next question. I think this is really a good one. Um, can cannabis treat pain from shingles? What kind should I look for? The answer is yes. I've had a number of patients who had shingles and also friends who had shingles. And I think the pain relief uh, slides, the wellness slides you were showing, just showing work pretty well, don't they, don't they Manny? They do. And I would actually recommend um, our one-to-one -one soothe. Um, we have that in a lotion, a balm, a tincture, a vape, you name it. Um, and you can apply it topically. I would probably recommend the lotion for shingles, not the balm, because depending on the delivery methods, whether it's menthol, eucalyptus, or otherwise, may irritate it. So you always want to ask, depending on the type of shingles or the severity of your shingles, you may want to start with the lotion first and then move your way up if needed. Sure, sure. Let's jump on to the next one. It's a good question. This this next question is, I live in a state that has medical marijuana, but the dispensaries are far and few between. I don't often, uh, I, they don't offer very effective products. What would, what would you do? Well, I do know that there are states, uh, Georgia and Texas come to mind, uh, where they've limited the amount of THC in the products. Uh, they haven't made it very friendly for dispensaries to open up, so it's hard, they're hard to find. Um, the state has legislature has done what they can to try to slow down the program, even though the people in that particular state have asked for it. Um, I think the hard part about it is there's not much you can do. Unfortunately, you're at the whim of your local state officials. Um, I would say pay attention to the COAs, find out how much actual product, CBD, THC, terpenes, cannabinoids, that you're able to purchase and then candidly try to find a, a convenient uh, dispensary, although they're far and few between, try to find one that can really help you. Uh, a lot of the state licensed dispensaries will try to help you with products. They'll give you some consultation. But again, I don't know the state that you're in. And I do know that it frustrates me that these politicians are trying to play doctor and not making products that are easy for patients to, to get the relief that they're looking for. Your thoughts, Manny? Yeah, that, that, that is a tough question, Mark, especially not knowing the state or the products being used. Um, and the only thing I would add to that is to journal, find yeah. out the terpene profiles. And if nothing will work from the dispensaries, find a good source for hemp-based uh, products. Not yeah. all are equal. You do want to do your research on those to make sure you're getting the products that are on the labels and what they're recommended for. However, that's sometimes the only route to navigate around these dispensaries or these regulations that are limiting dispensaries for providing products that are more beneficial. Right. That's a good question. Let's move on to the next one. It says, um, what can I do to mitigate paranoia caused by THC? I think this is where CBD helps. Your comments, Manny? It does. Um, you can always titrate the effects of THC down by taking CBD, particularly in a tincture um, sublingually. Um, typically, you won't find too much that are high in CBD in a vape. As I mentioned before, they will crystallize. 
However, um, I would also go as far to suggest that you want to make sure you're using the right product for the effect you're looking for for the right time of day. Um, and what I mean by that is if you're using a sativa category product, meaning a, a product that's typically meant for the daytime, can be energetic and good for focus, and you're trying to relax, that can cause some serious paranoia and anxiety. And likewise, if you're trying to go to work or do something effective during the day and you're using an indica, or as like Amy said in the in the presentation, an in the couch product, but you're trying to be productive, that can also cause frustration and again, paranoia. Your environment as well can play a role in this. One trick that I like to use when I first retired from the military, because it took me a while to adapt to use marijuana and not feel paranoid, because I used to actually discharge members from the service because of use of marijuana. So I have a lot to give back. I would write myself a little personal note saying, hey, I chose to do this. It's safe. It's meant to do A, B, and C. A little paragraph, four or five sentences. And by the time I got done reading that little paragraph, I felt better. Another idea that you can use is any of your favorite pastimes. If you like to do crosswords, if you have a game you like to play on your phone, um, whatever it may be, direct your attention when you're paranoid or anxious to that. And you should start feeling better within minutes, if not maybe a half hour. And then your body will get used to it. You, you'll get acclimated to that feeling. So as long as you're using a product that's meant to take care of the symptoms you're aiming for. Sure. Yeah. And hopefully that helps quite a bit. Again, CBD is, is very, very effective for this. Um, next question is, what is the annual cost to maintain a medical marijuana license, both exams and the license? What do the continual costs look like? Well, I think in order, the costs are broken down really into three parts. I think, first of all, the state of Florida, for example, or most states require you to get a state license, just like a driver's license. I know here in the state of Florida, that is $77. Then you've got to have a doctor certify to the state of Florida that you do have a qualifying conditions. And that's where the MMTCs, like MMTC of Florida, comes into play. They're the ones who the, you go to the you go to the doctor, he verifies for the state that you have a qualifying condition and puts you into the state registry. Now once that have the to, you have to pay that doctor to do that. And those uh, those visits are anywhere between $199 visit dollars all the way down to $99. It depends on the doctor. It depends on the uh, promotions going on. But there's a, ra a wide range of that cost of, of visiting the doctor. And you, the thing about the state of Florida, thank you very much, Rick Scott. He made you do that twice a year, even though you have a condition that doesn't go away. So you've got to do that twice. Uh, so that $199 or that $99 is done twice a year. And then I think the third cost factor that comes into place is actually the cost of your medical cannabis, which I've seen some estimates um, done by some studies that runs anywhere between, depending on your condition, runs anywhere between $25 up to as much as $75 a month, depending on your condition and the product that you're buying, uh, unless you have a very severe condition that requires a lot more medical cannabis, like cancer, for example. Your thoughts? I, absolutely, Mark. Um, you covered the, the the basis of the license and the medical exam. Um, and the medical dispensaries, but also that's a great point to, or a great way to point out that those consultations are so important. Um, right. A lot of the times the, the physicians cannot provide you a direct uh, recommendation because it's not a prescription, it's a recommendation as to what to take, when to take it, how many times a day and so forth, because so many products are different. They vary from batch to batch. They're not as consistent as the pharmacopoeia, unless you're right. dealing with our wellness line. So coming in, taking the time, maybe 30, 40 minutes to sit down with us, have a discussion, a consultation. We won't dump truck on you. We want to just give you the information you're looking for. So that way you can start off with products and then come back and we could dial that in if you're not already there. Um, journaling it, make sure you take those notes and ask questions of your, your medical clinics that you're looking to go see. Um, for instance, uh, MMTC is very good at not only getting the medical exams done, but they give great consultations. There are some clinics out there that may just offer the recommendation without any consultation and right. leave you to the devices of the dispensary. So ask those questions, visit a dispensary, visit a clinic, take your time, because this is where you're not um, necessarily bottled up by insurance to where you can go or not go. Right, that's a really point. Uh, that's a good point. That's really there. Um, I want to also, let's jump to the next question. And while doing, doing the next question, I want to explain some terminology here. Question is, how do I actually use the vast array of products available? Well, um, this is where a consultation with a, um, with a dispensary comes into play. I know that, um, first of all, 
the question is, do you want to use the best array or, or just a few products that you want to, that you feel comfortable trying? Uh, if you want to try the best array, the dispensaries will actually help you walk through there. Now, I want to clarify some, this, this, some terminology. Um, Manny, a, a dispensary like Satera in the state of Florida, Florida calls you an MMTC. Is that correct? They do. Right. And what do you, what do they call the clinics that recommend the, uh, the doctors? It, it, it's a vast array. So we call them in the dispensary world, as far as the industry term, we just call them marijuana clinics. Mm -hmm. um, and when, when we look them up, we get confused sometimes ourselves. We look up MMTCs and we find dispensaries. But if we just look up marijuana clinic, that's when we start finding the physicians and the clinics in our local area. Right, right. So that's why um, you got to be real careful because terminology, especially state to state and especially in the state of Florida can be confusing. Um, a medical marijuana clinic will actually help you get the card. The MMTC will actually help to get the product. So I hope that clarifies any terminology issues that are out there. But let's let's tackle this question, Manny. I think that if you really want to try the vast array, this is where a consultation comes into play because there's, you know, whether you're using it sublingually, orally, um, topical, or flower, um, there's a lot of different ways of applying it and, and some tips, tips and tricks. Absolutely. That consultation is crucial. Um, and typically, a lot of people come in very excited very anxious and ready to go. And we appreciate that. However, we kind of would appreciate you to pump the brakes a little bit, start low, go slow. Um, typically start off with the wellness line. You don't necessarily want to jump off the deep end right into our chemovars or strain-based products and concentrates and all these other things without knowing what products are going to be the most beneficial and in which route of administration. So again, those five routes are oral, sublingual, topical, um, edible and inhalation. And then the last and sixth one is going to be your smokable route, which comes in ounces. The rest come in milligrams. And understanding yeah. that would be key too, because you want to make sure you're not over purchasing, that you have a good amount of medicine that spans out during your, your 35 or 70 days, depending on which route you're using. Um, it's a lot of rabbit holes, but we're here to help you navigate that during those consultations. I mean, I, I draw a parallel to this, like somebody who's learning how to drink and walks up to a bartender and sees all the all the bottles of liquor and says, how do I use all this liquor? Okay, That's a great, great I mean, one. Great way to say it. I mean, you, you, I would say go low and go slow. And I would talk to the bartender about the different options that you have and what you may want to use and what you'll like and you won't like kind of thing. Yeah. And, and you don't have to be upset if you don't get to use every single product or as you related to every try every single drink in the, in the bar, you know, um, yeah. once you find what works, stick to it. it. It's usually beneficial. Yeah. Be cool. Okay. You don't need to try them all. Find a couple that work based on your terpene profile, find something that you're comfortable with. If you want to, if you want to try different things, please do. I mean, that's, that, that's the benefit of cannabis. You're in control. But you, 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 be cool. Go start low and go slow. I think is the best thing. By the way, with alcohol, with caffeine, with uh, with a lot of different things, including cannabis. Question: Best painkiller for spine, back, bones were broken. Pain never goes away. Manny, you got anything that can help with pain? Absolutely. We have a few different products. Um, and the way it sounds is like you may want to start with a high TAC product first which is only going to necess or only going to distract you from that pain as you're mm -hmm. implementing CBD products to help with the inflammation and possible healing in those areas and as you start using more CBD like our one to one actually the high THC would be the one to nine relief to start and then you can implement a one to one soothe during the day or if you're occupied where you can't be euphoric and then at night again to help you sleep you use the one to nine relief and using both of those will be beneficial as well as a topical. We have a one-to-one -one called The Fix. It's a salve that works amazing. I haven't had one complaint about it to where mm -hmm. it hasn't helped anybody at some degree. And always keep in mind, give the CBD time to build up in your system. It could take weeks, if not months, for it to really get into your system and start working on those CB2 receptors to help that inflammation. So go back and forth. Um, journal it, um, come in, get that consultation so we could better explain it if that wasn't clear enough. Yeah, I think it's important to point out uh, a lot of people when they have pain go to THC for pain. But what they don't realize is that if you reduce the inflammation, it reduces the pain. I found that when I had my knee replacement that if I went to a higher regime of CBD to THC, meaning maybe I'd go to four THC or four CBD to one THC, I would get better relief than doing a one-to-one -one because it got rid of the inflammation. And that's something to really pay attention to that's here.
It's quite oh. important too, Mark, because mm -hmm. a lot of people who are dealing with pain, chronic pain, typically get stuck on that plateau of using high THC products. Right. Then it becomes ineffective and they're trying to titrate to different strains or chemovars. But if you're tackling it with CBD and THC, you'll notice that that same product will last longer. You won't need to teeter between one product or another so rapidly, although it's usually um, going to happen regardless. So try to implement that CBD, particularly if you're not using THC. There's so many people that I consult with that don't use any products during the day because of what they're occupied with. And right. then I tell them, well, start taking that CBD. You'll notice that you won't even need half the THC you take in the evenings to try to get rid of your symptoms. But always keep in mind that your pain will come back once that THC wears off. Right. Right. And that's that's why you use it uh, on a daily basis. I mean, I wish the herniated discs in my neck would go away. They're not. So I have to constantly manage them. And I do that by keeping the inflammation down and, the, and managing the pain. Um, let's talk, move on to the next question. I think this is really a, a good example of uh, really getting the right terpene profile. You know, I've been using medical marijuana for a year, for a, for over a year, and have yet, and as yet, have not been able to find one that helps with pain from my muscle disease. Now, I got into medical cannabis. I think I cannot tell you the number of people that say, "Well, I've tried medical cannabis; it doesn't work," or "I smoke it; it doesn't work." And every time I look at the product that they're using, the terpene profile does not match or not not manage the condition that they're trying to uh, that they're trying to address. This is a prime example, Manny, of paying attention to what terpenes work for you, and more importantly, getting a consultation. Your thoughts? I'd agree again, Mark. Um, and, and to that point, in this particular issue with muscle disease, um, typically I would recommend hybrids with high B caryophylline, um, mm -hmm. and depending if you want it for day or night, myrcene or limonene. However, this might be a case where it's more of the hybrids that are indica leaning, meaning more B caryophylline, which is going to help with that spasticity, that muscle pain. But that myrcene and or linalool and terpenoline is going to help even more so with that spasticity and muscle disease. Um, so you may be cornered initially to dealing with hybrids or hybrid indica category products. However, that doesn't mean you're going to be stuck there. But that consultation is going to be most beneficial so we can really get to the root and understanding of what you're dealing with. Sure. Medical marijuana will work. Getting the right terpene profile will solve this problem. And I think getting some consultation from either, um, if you used MMTC, you're, you have a dosing center that can help you. If you go to Satera, they'll give you a consultation. Please avail yourself of that because I think you'll, you'll find it will help you quite a bit and probably save you a lot of money too because you're not just hit or miss trying a number of different products that are out there. Um, let's jump to the next question that, that's here. Um, now, we had a question that came in live, and I think it's a really good question. In Florida, I own a registered gun with a concealed weapons license. Will, it, will that prevent me from obtaining a medical marijuana license? And the answer is no. You can get a medical marijuana, medical marijuana license if you have a concealed weapons permit. Um, Nikki Freed, who is the last commissioner in this particular area, was in charge of getting people medical marijuana license and, con and issued concealed weapons permits. So getting a or, or being able to obtain a license is not the problem. Where you're going to run into a problem if you want to buy another another weapon, um, there is some controversy there because um, the the form, the federal form, requires you to state whether you're using cannabis, whether recreationally or medically, and they can reject your um, your permit to buy the next weapon uh, based on that. Although there are lawsuits that are out there that are preventing that from happening, they're still going through the appeals process. So that's a little bit muddied right now. But owning a gun and getting a medical marijuana license is kosher. Your thoughts, Manny? Yep, 100%. I am in the same boat and it goes vice versa. Having a medical marijuana license doesn't keep you from getting your concealed weapons license, though not very necessary as much anymore here in Florida. So, right. but to your point, yeah, getting another weapon or otherwise because of the federal questionnaire and because the federal government doesn't recognize marijuana as a medicinal or a medical question for that matter is why they can ask that question and not be in violation of HIPAA from what I understand. Sure, sure. Well, Manny, we've covered um, a lot of questions. We've covered a lot of territory tonight. Um, let's uh, let's kind of wrap it up for a second. Uh, your final thoughts? 
Uh, I'm glad to be here. I hope somebody, if not everybody, learned something that was attending. Thank you for being here. If you're in the Panhandle area, Alabama, or we're in Texas during this storm that's coming through, I hope you're safe or getting safe and hope all is well. Again, thank yeah. you for having me, Mark. Yeah, and I want to mention, if you're looking for getting a card, we have the medical marijuana treatment clinics. Naturally, Soterra is a great the dispensary to take a look at. So thank you very much and have a great weekend. And Manny, um, we'll talk, talk to you next week. Looking forward to it, Mark. Thank you.